Hi, and welcome to Tuesday Community Connections. You know, this COVID stuff has been going on a long time, much longer than I ever thought it would. I have to admit, I was one of those that thought maybe it'll be a month or, or six weeks or so, and then we'll go back to life almost as normal. And here we are, how many months later? <clears throat> and we're still not really seeing an end to this or a good solution. And we're still living wondering, uh, you know, are there going to be more cases? And, and how bad could this get? And how many people are going to be sick? And how many people are going to die? And what does that mean for us? All kinds of questions out there about what does that mean for schools and colleges? And uh, what about the economy? And what about our own budget? And all of these kinds of things. It's one of those times where it just feels like life is heavy, isn't it? I mean, we've been dealing with COVID for a long time, since February, March. Um, and then there's other complicating factors on top of that as well. You know, we're dealing with the racial tension right now. Uh, what does it mean to be a person? What does it mean to have different colored skin than other people? What does it mean to be a community, even though we don't all believe exactly the same thing or, or have the exact same habits and traditions? What does it mean to live together as a, a country and as a community, and can we do that? What does it mean when we have political differences? It seems like what we, what we end up doing is just dividing ourselves, and it makes life feel heavy and difficult. And then you add into that just the questions about what does it mean for the future and, and all of the uncertainty that is out there and maybe some of our fears as well. If I send my kids to school, are they going to be okay? If I, if I teach at a school or work at a school, am I going to be okay? Am I going to have enough money for rent or for medicine or for food or to do the things that I need and I want to do? As I've thought about it, I thought, you know, this is one of those times where when life feels heavy, maybe we need to step back a little bit. And, and uh, you've heard the saying, you know, is your glass half empty or half full? It's real easy these days to see the glass is half empty, isn't it? I mean, there's a lot that's missing. Things that we haven't been able to do. Um, things that we have to do because of COVID or because of whatever else in our family or, or in our lives that's going on. And it just makes the days difficult. So I've been wondering, what would happen if we changed our mind? If we looked differently? What if we look and see the half full part of the glass? What if we look and see what is there and what is going on that's good, rather than stopping with those things that might weigh us down or cause us concern? I think that this is a time where all of us really need that time to celebrate, need a time of joy, need a time to feel hope. And that doesn't mean that we make it up. But as I was saying earlier, maybe it's a time where we look and we see that, yeah, there isn't, the glass isn't all the way full, but it is half full. There is something there to celebrate. I'd like to read to you some verses from the book of Philippians, chapter 4. <clears throat> Paul's words to Christians at the time and, and to you and to me today. Uh, chapter 4, verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be, be made known to God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. I find it interesting that Paul says in there right away, rejoice in the Lord always. Not when things are good, but always. And then goes right on to say, again, I will say, rejoice. I mean, Paul is saying in here, there's always reason to rejoice. There's reason to be glad. Make your needs known to every to, to the Lord. The Lord is near. Don't worry about anything. Um, in prayer and supplication, let your needs be, be made known to God. God is where you are. We don't have to worry. And then he talks at the end about the peace of God, which surpasses all of our understanding will guard our hearts and our minds in Jesus Christ. There's reason to celebrate. There is hope. God is with us. That in itself gives us reason to see that the glass isn't empty. And it's, only, it's not only the empty part that we ought to see. I had a friend in college, and, 
And uh, when she would go through especially difficult times, she had this way of kind of turning it around a little bit. Um, and I remember one time when she hurt her ankle really bad. She was a soccer player, had a hurt ankle, wasn't sure if she'd be able to play anymore. Uh, we were sitting in the ER waiting for the x-ray results to come out to see what was going to happen to her, uh, whether her, her uh, future that year as a soccer player would be sitting on the bench or playing the game. And as we were sitting, she looked at me and she said, is this the fun part? And she would do that often when things were challenging and diff difficult. Is this the fun part? Just to look in, in a different way. Just to say it isn't all heavy and it isn't all awful. I also have another friend um, that I've known since I was uh, in about middle school, um, Jane. And Jane is probably now um, about 60 years old. Jane has been in a nursing home, I'm guessing for about 10 years. Jane's had lots of physical things going on, but you know, if you go to visit Jane, if you would visit Jane on the, in, on the phone, you would have no idea that she's sitting in a nursing home. Jane is happy. Jane is um, finding things to, to be excited about. Jane is finding things to do. She doesn't complain that she's in a nursing home. She doesn't need a whole lot to entertain her, but she finds joy and she finds hope and she finds uh, good things in just about everything that she does. I think about Jane a lot. I think about Jane's ability to be, right now, confined in this nursing home, except for the three times a week that she has to leave to go out for dialysis. And she finds hope, and she finds joy. Going to visit Jane is not difficult because she's not sad and life isn't heavy around her. Jane wants to know what's going on, but Jane will find reason to laugh. My mom often says, you only see what you're looking for. And that's true. When you're physically looking for something, you really only see what you're looking for. I mean, have you ever had that somebody tell you uh, if, you're, if you need a particular item and it's, well, it's right there in the grocery store on, on a particular shelf. And you've never seen it before because you've never looked for it. I wonder these days, how often do we look for hope? How often do we look for joy? What are we looking at and what do we see? We do have lots of reasons these days to celebrate and to rejoice. I mean, look at the beautiful weather that we've been having recently. These wonderful blue sky days where it's not really hot, but it's nice and warm. It's not humid, but it's fun to be outside just because the days are beautiful. The grass is this wonderful green. The trees are tall and stately. I mean, nature is just amazing. We can rejoice over family and friends that we have people that we can see and people that we can can have relationships with and even though now we may not be able to physically be with them as though as we would like we still can connect with them we still know that they love and care about us we still know that they're there we still know that they will celebrate in the ways that they're able I think these days of technology I mean imagine if we didn't have the technology that we do we couldn't then video our worship services or video community connections. We couldn't do FaceTime. There's a lot of things that we couldn't do. Or with the technology that we have that will allow us to get all kinds of information in just seconds. I mean, think of what we're able to do and see and be a part of because of the technology that we have. Think of things that you have in your life. What is it that you're thankful for? What is it that makes a difference? When it's easy to look at what you can't do, or when it's easy to look at what isn't good, take some time and instead look at what do you have? What is there to celebrate? And it'll lift your heart and lift your spirits. I found recently in, in praying that I always start with things to be thankful for. Even if I'm coming with a specific concern or a specific need in prayer, I start with the things, especially that day, that I am thankful for. Because I want to thank God for what I've been given, but I also want to remind myself, look at what I have. If you don't do that, I encourage you to do that as well. And that can change your perspective and that can change your outlook as well. I think the bottom line is, even though these days can be difficult and challenging, and we're all weary of having to live the way that we are, that we still have a God who loves us, who cares for us, who never leaves, who provides for us. And as Paul says in these verses, 
The peace of God that passes all understanding will fill our hearts and minds with Christ Jesus our Lord. So may that peace be yours today, and may you see reason to celebrate today. And as you open your eyes and look, find all of those good things that are around you, and know that you too have a reason to rejoice, and to hear Paul say, I say it again, rejoice. Enjoy your week.